Welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to talk about some basic equipment you're going to need to start up and, um, you know, do a little hobby or if you want to get into a business or anything like that. I mean, I'm not, you know, a professional or anything like that, but I'm also starting up. And I want you to learn from my mistakes and tell you about some do's or don'ts or, you know, any advice I can give. Um, so, you know, it's a little reishi mushroom. I think it's pretty cool. Um, first off, I want to say that I'm not going to answer any questions about, you know, psilocybin or anything like that. Any type of, you know, cultivation of psilocybin, I will not answer. Um, please do your own research on that. Um, you know, but yeah, I... You know, yeah. So, anyways, basically to start up, um, I normally start it up on, um, you're going to need what's called the shotgun fruiting chamber. And basically, the whole concept behind it is like a tote with some, you know, holes drilled in there. You're going to need a drill, of course. And the purpose of this is to keep the moisture in, the humidity. All right, so we'll come back to that later, but you know, you're gonna need totes of different sizes. Um, if not, get the, you know, built-in, you know, grow chamber like I did. But you know, I started off here, you know, you start off somewhere. You can see that I have many totes to hold many different things. I have um, a lot of these. Um, rings in there. They come in handy all the time, especially when you're pressure cooking. We'll come back to that So, you know totes um, I started off with jars But if I want to make a recommendation, I think jars are a great way to start up and learn what you're doing But now that I'm getting more advanced um, Bags are the way to go. Trust me. Um, it's gonna save you a headache and cleaning the jars every single time bleaching it you run through a lot of bleach because you don't want, you know, mold for the next, you know, experiment or whatever it is. So, or the next grow, it's, it's trust me. Um, jars are a great way to start up and, you know, it saves more money, but the labor on it, trust me, you don't want to be up in one o'clock in the morning fucking washing, oh, excuse my language, you know, uh, washing dishes and stuff. Um, next is, you know, a little, um, what's this called? Thermostat. The laser gun yeah so it's a thermometer basically uh, you just point well I don't have the batteries in there but um, point at whatever that comes in handy when you're uh, pressure cooking or when you're doing agar especially agar we'll come back to that as well um, of course micro pour tape um, in this you know hobby or business you know, a lot of people call it micro micro spore like the mushroom um, a little banter, but it's called micro pour tape. Um, it comes in handy to breathable material, especially when you're doing jars and lids. Um, you know, yeah. Peat moss. Peat moss. Um, we use that in what's called uh, bulk, like bulk substrate. Um, a lot of growers use peat, use peat moss. I experiment with different things like vermiculite. Um, you're gonna need uh, what's the other one perlite Perlite to keep you know moisture in long story short uh, if you want to really help with the humidity in this uh, Shotgun fruiting chamber you put perlite in the bottom That's with water not too much, but um, it, the perlite keeps the water in there. You don't really have to miss that much um, But you have to fan you definitely have to fan. But we'll come back to that. I'll do more videos um, Yeah, peat moss so peat moss Vermiculite is a great way to start up if you're doing, you know, jars and stuff like that, but Yeah, it comes in handy Petri dishes Um, I love petri dishes. I like, you know, playing scientists, you know Growing, you know, pearl mushrooms Pearl oysters My oyster mushrooms and stuff Um, you're gonna need a plenty of them Let me see. Oh, we didn't even talk about pricing. Sorry about that. So let's go back. Um, jars, roughly, I don't know, eight to ten dollars for a case. Um, totes, pretty cheap. You can get them at Target or Home Depot. I forget how much they cost, to be honest. But um, this was roughly around like six bucks. I don't think I paid more than ten dollars for peat moss. You get this? I got this at Home Depot, I believe. Uh, Home Depot is the best place to go. 
Um, they don't, they're not sponsoring this channel, by the way. But, um, Petri dishes. This cost, I think, $20, $20 for a sleeve. I think it's like a dollar a, a Petri dish. It's like $25 in there. I'm not sure. Um, but it's roughly around $20 plus, you know, shipping or whatever. Um, this fridge, I think I mentioned in the last video, $5 at Walmart. I'm not sure if they carry it anymore, but I had this for, what, a year or maybe two years? These are different stickers I got from, you know, different places. But this is hot and cold. So if you want to like incubate some of these petri dishes or you want to store them, you know, in the future, definitely get a big cooler, you know, something like that. But, you know, better than that too. See, I'm always trying to upgrade. I'm pretty soon I'm going to upgrade to the chest, you know, but I got to get a, you know, a room or so, you know, I can't be doing it out of my spare bedroom. Um, rubbing alcohol. I believe, I don't know, this debate, some people say 70 is the best. I heard that 90 is the best. Um, I don't know why 70, I don't know. They switch it up. But rubbing alcohol, you're gonna, you're, there's no such thing as that you have enough. You're always gonna need rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Get it, trust me, you're gonna need it, please. Um, tin foil, that's another thing. Tin foil, you can never have enough tin foil. Um, you always, especially if you're doing these jars, if you're doing the jars, you're going to need the tin, tin foil to, you know, for one, for two reasons, to not ruin these lids, you can see, I'm going to show you the difference, this is, you can see it's starting to rust up, that's because when you pressure cook it, the moisture, you know, messes it up, this is a brand new one, look at that. So, and also, you know, we'll come back to the other ones as well. But, what was I saying? Yeah, the jars, man. You're going to need the tin foil for the jars. Um, What else? Let's talk about the pressure cooker. Pressure cooker. Um, This cost how much? I don't know. Between, I don't think I paid more than 50 bucks. This is a really cheap one. This is a really bad one. Um, For if you want to go far... But if you're starting up, it's a great one. It's low cost, I don't know, maybe around $36 or so. Um, if you never use a pressure cooker, I'm gonna show you what's it about. And these are the jars I started, oh, sorry about that. I don't know if that was loud. Um, it comes with a false bottom. Um, and then you fill it up with water, not all the way, maybe like an inch or two for the jars. Let me show you. So you put the jars in there. I think this one fills up seven. Fill it up like an inch or two of water. Close the lid. And this is called a rocker. So you know, let it, um, once it starts rocking and it's making a lot of noise, start counting down uh, 90 minutes and then turn it off. And just let it cool down for 24 hours. So, yep, you're gonna need a pressure cooker. Let's put this to the side. Um, you're going to need agar. You can see I, I'm running low. I don't really have more, but the one I use is um, PDA, potato dextrose agar. And basically, the instructions 20 gram per 500 you know, milliliters. Look at that, 30 minutes. No more than 30 minutes. You don't want to caramelize the agar. That would suck. Um, grain. I experiment with, with multiple different grains. So far, uh, popcorn has been one of the best. Popcorn and um, what was the other one? Ryegrass seed. Ryegrass seed was great, but the the only downfall about ryegrass seed that it's it sort of sticking sticking to everything. It sticks to your fingers that like you try to throw it and it like sticks to your finger that you can't like take it off. But anyways, um, popcorn is really great, but the downfall, that there's always a bad and negative, but the con about this one, the, the popcorn, me particularly, even if I hydrate it for 24 hours or whatever, um, it holds moisture. You got to really, really make sure it's dry. Sometimes um, I even pat it down with, with uh, paper towels. But that's for a different video I'll show you. But grain, you know, it could be popcorn. It could be rye berries, rye grass seed. It could be anything. People use, you know, wild bird seed. So I'll do videos on different ones. Just showing you that you can grow mushrooms on basically anything. As long as you got, you know what you're doing. Um, you're gonna need parafilm. These are for the plates, 
And what this is, is it's like a breathable tape. It's kind of like micro pore tape, but way better. It's stretchy. You can stretch it around the, the plate and then it keeps the bacteria out and stuff. Uh, flames, I have like a million lighters. You're gonna, if I can make a recommendation, um, I'm about to take my own advice as well. I'm about to buy and do an unboxing on uh, one of those heat transfer devices. Because one, it's safe. Um, the less fire you have in your lab, the better. You, know, you don't want to burn anything down. Um, so I don't feel safe using a blowtorch, you know, lighters and stuff like that, heat lamps, alcohol lamps. I just want to get that um, electric um, sterilizer tool. So you can start with anything. You can start with a lighter like I did. You can start, you know, this costs what, a dollar? Probably less. So this is low start. I'm showing you low startup stuff. But, you know, in the future, you know, you got to upgrade. Germex. Or hand sanitizer. Can't have enough of that. Cannot have enough of hand sanitizer. Um, you're going to need distilled water. Non-chlorinated water. Uh, make sure you don't use a bottle that had chemicals in there. You don't want to use, um, I don't know, pie and saw and finish the bottle and then fill it up with water and start spraying that's bad so make sure this is brand new never had chemicals in it buy it from the store it costs a couple cents it's not that expensive um bleach these you can never have too much cleaning supplies um you're gonna keep hearing me say that because you don't you want to prevent contamination that is the, my college's job is to you know fight or prevent contamination so bleach you know, rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizers, gloves. You want to invest in yourself. Get the hairnet. Um, get, you know. Yeah, I just want to wrap this video up before I run out of memory. Um, basically, it is not really optional, but definitely a lighting space where, um, where you're working at is definitely going to help you out. <clears throat> um, flow hood is basically, you're going to need it. You're gonna need it. Let's be honest. I started off with a cardboard box, and um, you know, I made myself a glove box out of cardboard. Then I upgraded to you know a box fan with a HEPA filter that works. But you know, if you really want to ensure that you know minimum contamination, invest in a nice um, laminar flow hood. This is called a laminar flow hood. Once again, invest in a laminar flow hood. It doesn't matter what brand. Um, but do your own research. I'll I'll do more videos on that as well. Um, what else? Just to wrap it up, you're gonna need um, plenty of gloves, hair nets, all your cleaning supplies. If you have tools to help you out, definitely invest in tools. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So I'm running out of memory here, but I'm gonna do more videos. Let me know what you think about this video. Um, if you don't know, I have an Instagram. Check out my Instagram. Check out, um, you know, my Patreon if you want to support the channel and check out uh, Facebook and let me know. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Okay, thank you. Much love.